Hi guys, I fixed a dryer with my husband Steve this week and I learned a little something about personality differences. So to give you a little bit of background, I'm not a very handy person and Steve, not a very handy person, but somehow we have learned that if we work together, we pretty much make up about one single handy person unit. <laughs> and so when Steve came to me, about two weeks ago and said, we're gonna need to fix our dryer. It just quit working all of a sudden. Well, what do you think we did? And we started Googling, <laughs> right? And so we did, we looked up some videos. What do you do if your dryer isn't working? And I found a video, great video. In fact, I'm gonna go ahead and link it in the box below because maybe you have a broken dryer you need to fix. So I pulled up this video and I watched it and the guy walked through all the things that, that you can do to figure out why your dryer stopped and then how to fix it. Great video. So about 10 minutes later, I was like, all right, I know what we need to do. Let's go fix this thing. And Steve, true to his own personality, said, but wait, we need to find some other videos. We need to figure out exactly what's going on here. We've got some work to do in the preparation department. And see, that's the thing. Steve and I have very different personalities. You see, Steve and his personality, I think you could say his motto is always prepared. And then there's me. My personality's motto is let's get her done. <laughs> let's get her done. I want to check off my checklist and I want to do it now. And I'm not really that concerned about doing it right as long as it gets done well enough. And so I watched my little video. I ran and grabbed a butter knife from the kitchen and I said, I think this will do the job. <laughs> and I went downstairs to start working on the dryer. Well, Steve kind of chuckled. He said, you're going to fix the dryer with a butter knife. <laughs> and he went and he got, got the right gloves to wear. He grabbed all the best tools for the job. I was already halfway <laughs> working on the dryer. And that's what it's like with our different personalities. Guess what happens sometimes? We butt heads a little bit. Has it happened to you where you see somebody with a different personality and you get frustrated with them? One time in my work, there was a girl I was working with, with Crew, Campus Crusade for Christ, with college students here in Colorado Springs. And she just had a really different personality from mine. And I had had enough of her not valuing the things that I was so sure were the most important things. And I was about ready to just blast her. I was about ready to just go in, confront her, you know, guns blazing, and blast her. And in a in a spirit-filled moment of wisdom, which I know I can't take any credit for, I thought I should sit down first and do some journaling and some praying and just talk to God, not just about what I'm frustrated about with this other person, but also maybe how am I approaching it wrongly? And what would he like to show me about that? And I found a great verse I wanna share with you guys today. This verse is Romans 15, one. We who are strong ought to bear with the failings of the weak and not to please ourselves. Each of us should please his neighbor for his good to build him up. Okay, um, just a quick word about that verse. Very rarely is any of us strong in every way. We each, because of our different personalities, are strong in different ways at different times. So in this particular instance with this girl that I was working with, I was strong in certain areas that weren't her areas of strength. And I was frustrated with her. I'm strong in this, what's going on with you? And when I sat down and God showed me the verse just a couple verses later, 15, seven says, accept one another then just as Christ accepted you in order to bring praise to God. And I realized that my failings need a savior just as much as her failings do. Why do I have so much patience with my failings and so little patience with somebody else's? So this is a world made up of so many different people and so many different personalities. And you notice it when you start working on a dryer with your husband and realize we go about this so differently. Steve is always prepared, but a little slow. I get her done but I'm gonna do a poor job of it if I'm not careful. In fact, when I went down to fix the dryer, I forgot to unplug it. Guess what I did? I gave myself a little shock. <laughs> and Steve comes peeking around the corner and he says, you forgot to unplug it? That is something my husband would never do. He's always prepared. 
So we need each other. And so when I go to do a job with Steve and I go in in my let's get her done kind of way, I get a little shock. <laughs> well, this is why I have Steve around. It might be it might be a little frustrating sometimes if he says, did you remember to unplug it? Did you grab the right tool? And he wants to check with me about my always prepared checklist. Well, I don't have that checklist. And so I find it frustrating. No, I'm just getting it done, but I need him. He's good for me. Well, we're good for each other. And you guess, you can see this incredibly well in a marriage, but this is true in every relationship in the body of Christ. You see, God created us all together imperfect so that all together we can be the body that shows his light to the world. Thanks guys. This has been your Tuesday talk. I hope you guys have a great day.